Happy New Week, everybody. Tim Knight here, Slope of Hope. What a sad, sad testament it is today, even to see how things have changed. So today, June 6, is D-Day. And uh, June 6 was the proud day where thousands and thousands of extraordinarily brave people uh, sought to liberate Europe, tens of thousands, really, in the greatest amphibious invasion in human history. A remarkable event. And then now we have life getting stranger than fiction, where Congressman Wiener has Wiener Gate, lies through his teeth, and then admits that he was lying, but to protect his wife. Well, God bless him. What a champ. <laughs> Disgusting. Well, anyway, I don't know which... I guess he's in New York or something, whatever district he represents. I personally would be ashamed. I don't imagine he'll last two weeks, maybe even one. He's, he's going to get squeezed out of there. This is just... Ugh. Anyway, on more important matters, uh, like, oh, my blog. Um, a couple of reminders. One, uh, I've got about 4,600 followers on Twitter. If you want to be one of them, just click there. It costs $0 a year, and uh, I can bug you in real time, notify you of any posts or thoughts or what have you. Um, I'm not one of these sorts who sends a tweet every 13 seconds, and I promise no crotch shots. Uh, also, since apparently I need to remind you, support the sponsors by clicking the ads, which is how we support me for all this hard work that I do for you good people. There's ads here. There's an ad here. There's ads down there. By God, there's got to be something of interest to you. So for Christ's sake, click something. Show your love. It's, don't make me all, go all NPR on you and just resort to full-time guilt. So, back to the charts. The funny thing is that I found, because today was, was one of my best days in a very, very long time, maybe months, maybe a lot of months, and it's funny because these days never announce themselves. I, anytime this happens, I don't start the day with like 30 points off the ES thinking, wow, today's going to be amazing. It's always, it always comes in really humdrum. I think uh, the ES was like up one point when the day started. So it's it's the cur most curious thing. The days that turn out to be sensational kind of sneak in. The other point I wanted to make was that as a bear, um, I need to make hay while the sun shines. Uh, 2008 was a fantastic year for me. And I think that 90% plus of all the profits I made that year were made in like 10 days. And the 250 other days were either not profitable or just churning. So uh, price doesn't pay, darling. What pays is taking a risk, taking a chance, and taking a position that turns out to be correct. That's what pays, not price. Jesus. So my disposition was bearish, and that has been paying well lately. I've got 84 shorts right now. I do listen to my little rule about, you know, use your emotions as a trading guide because I was getting a little giddy, I admit. And it's like, okay, that's a signal. Back off the pedal some. Back away. Take some profits. Um, so I took some profits in a few places. GDX, which I'm all gung-ho about, I, I don't have any position in that right now. But I respect and I understand the risk of a bounce. Uh, this bounce, for example, was about 50 points. Didn't take long, and that sort of thing can be very painful if you're very short. Uh, my view is that the bears are fully in control of this market again, but I don't really have the stomach to like sit out 50-point lurches in the ES. So I respect and understand why. Uh, you got to be a little bit cautious and watch for those bounces. So as snark as I get when people talk about bounces, honestly, I, I get it, and I respect that. Um, now... I would just point out before moving away from the ES chart here that not only did the inverted head and shoulders fail, not only was this trend line broken, not only was this trend line broken, but we've even gotten to the point where the bottom of the shoulders of that pattern have been violated. Everybody was all like, 1300 will be defended you now. Uh, well, evidently not. It's been broken. So if we did bounce, the strongest bounce I can imagine would be I don't know, maybe around 1315, 1320, something like that. Certainly below this area. But I can understand a fall this far and this fast seems a little stretched. All the same, 
my individual charts uh, have oodles of downside left. So that's one of the reasons I like, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of tiny shorts because I can kind of judge each of them on their own merit. Uh, one last thing before I show a few individual charts is, um, you know, the old saw about what's obvious is obviously wrong. Well, if that's true, if you believe that, then there won't be anything past QE2. Because everybody, everybody, everybody says, it's kind of like a tired cliche, QE3 is coming, QE4, 5, QE infinity. Ha <laughs> ha uh, Well, maybe not. I mean, maybe if everyone accepts that QE is coming, because you know, it's obviously a failure. They spent trillions of dollars to produce a few jobs at McDonald's. It's obviously a failure. Why don't you consider the notion that QE3 is not coming? Why don't you consider the idea that Bernanke is impotent now? Could be. Maybe that's the sort of thing that'll lead us to 1100 on the ES this year. So get away from this idea that QE3 is a guaranteed thing. Because maybe what's obvious is obviously wrong. Everybody thinks it's coming. I don't know. The euro is, uh, has been until today terribly strong. And I will simply say what I had said before, that... If this gets weak, the wind at the bear's back will become a full-blown gale. Uh, I am short FXE right now. Uh, I could, uh, you know, see this pushing higher, I suppose. But all the good news, I put that in quotes, about Greek bailout number 57 and so forth. I, I don't see what other good news could, could come out about the euro. But what I am saying is that Equities have been very soft in spite of the euro strength. If the euro itself gets soft too, I mean, we could see uh, a series of multi-hundred point drops in the Dow over several days. Uh, one of my more favorite ETFs right now, playing along that theme, is DBC. I have a very handsome head and shoulders in the making. It's not done yet, of course, but should it complete, we're going to see this bad boy fall to like, uh, what, 24, which would make a lot of sense given that trend line. See, I tumbled down to there. So I got a lot of this. Uh, they wheeled out jobs today for the whole Apple thing. And, uh, you know, this is kind of telling because the fact is they propped them up, pushed them out on stage, and the stock fell five and a half points about. Uh, there it is. Big old uh, bearish engulfing pattern there. So if Jobs' presence and some product announcements make that kind of performance for Apple, well, God help them. You know, you all know that he is a lifelong hero of mine. I think he's one of uh, tr a truly great American and a great businessman, but he will go someday and we're going to crash that day, or Apple is at least. I also want to point out that uh, app, since Apple is getting squishy, that this is the kind of thing that happens when Apple disappoints, and a disappointment will come at some point, because expectations of this stock does nothing but print money. When it disappoints, this this was like a 50% drop in one day on huge volume, and then it just kept falling. So um, I tend to shy away from Apple, but you know, to to say that the the stock, you know, I, I would say the stock peaked back in February, probably for many, 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 many years, a lot of years. So if I owned this, I would get the hell out. The cubes, run out of time here, only a minute and 20 seconds left. The cubes broke their trend line today, finally. Gold is acting just plain weird. I'm not touching it. As much as I like GDX, gold is acting just funny. Still way up there. Silver, on the other hand, could resume that downturn. If I were, if I were short this, which I'm not, I would have today's high as my stop. But it, I, I could see this resuming this downturn into that channel back into the mid 20s. TLT, I didn't realize this, and I'm sorry for not knowing, but this actually pays like a 4% plus dividend. I don't know why everybody in the country doesn't own this. This is, this is kind of an amazing instrument. What pays 4% out there? I know there's risk to it, but not only is there 4% plus, but it's been doing great. So TLT just, I don't know where that interest comes from. I thought bonds all paid like 1% these days, but astonishing fund. UUP, this is the dollar. Uh, this would be my stop on this one. I, 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 bought, I own some of this today as a day trade, did okay on it. 20.96 would be my stop if I did own it. And XLF, uh, I'd feel a little better as a bear if this had already bounced because that shows the opportunity for such a thing, but it hasn't yet. We'll see. All right, I'm out of time. Uh, I'm 100% short, and we will see how long that lasts. May the force be with you. Click some ads.